We have a brand new podcast coming out every Wednesday called Every Town, where we dive deep into missing persons cases, serial killers, and unsolved mysteries. The first episode drops on July 29th, so click the link in the description below to subscribe because every town has a dark side and we're covering some insane stories you'll definitely want to know about. Strange and Scary Mysteries of the Month, July 2020. Strange and Scary Mysteries of the Month is a compilation of the weird, disturbing, and downright baffling stories currently happening in our world. From UFOs to serial killers, ancient sites, mysterious creatures, and even ghosts, these are the Strange and Scary Mysteries of the Month for July 2020. Number 5. TikTok Luggage For a few teenagers from Seattle, Washington, it was going to be a fun day of adventure. They pulled out an app called Randonautica, which promises to get you out of your typical routine by sending you out to your local area to explore. The app asks you to set an intention to take advantage of synchronicities before giving you a set of coordinates which you follow. On June 21st, 2020, the teens used the app and were sent to Duwamish Head in West Seattle. They explored the area of Alki Avenue near the beach, and that's where they stumbled across it. They saw a suitcase from afar and jokingly told each other it might contain money. As one of the girls approached the suitcase, she noticed it smelled pretty bad. Their first thought was it was rotten food inside, but when they opened the suitcase, they found black plastic bags. Not knowing what it was, they got scared and called the police, and once the officers got there, They opened the bags and realized there were human remains inside. The entire thing had transformed into an active investigation now. It turns out the suitcase wasn't the only one found either. There was another black plastic bag found in the ocean around the area. Police worked with the coroner's office to identify the remains. It turns out they belonged to two different people. One of them belongs to 27-year-old Austin Wenner and the other to 36-year-old Jessica Lewis. No other information, though, has been released as the case is ongoing. As for rando nodding, people have now become intrigued with the app, wanting to try it firsthand. So far, the app has proven itself popular in leading people to strange instances and situations. For example, one user wanting to adopt kittens found a stray cat right by the rando knot location. Several users were also led to graves of their relatives. Meanwhile, another user was taken to an area where a man had been shot. Number 4. Madeline McCain, Suspect Named When three-year-old Madeline McCain disappeared from her hotel room in Portugal in 2007, the world was fixated on the case. Over the years, her disappearance has been featured in countless books TV shows, and more. But recently, news broke out that significant evidence has been found tying a suspect to the case. When Madeline first disappeared, there were several theories as to what happened to her. She had disappeared from inside her family's hotel room while her parents were having dinner at the same resort during a holiday trip in Portugal. Many blamed and accused Madeline's parents of being involved in her disappearance while others pointed at the Portuguese investigators for botching the initial investigation. The first case in Portugal was closed in 2008, but they reopened it in 2013. And Scotland Yard also started an investigation themselves in 2011. In June of 2020, British investigators announced a new suspect in the case, Christian Bruckner. He had lived in Germany until he received a child abuse offense in his teen years, After that, he headed for Portugal, living in Praia de Luz. This was also the same area where Madeline had disappeared from. Currently, he's in jail in Germany for raping a 75-year-old American woman in 2005. Bruckner is also a suspect for the disappearance of a 6-year-old German boy, Rennie Hasse, who went missing in Algezer, Portugal. The boy ran slightly ahead of his mother and her new partner while they were at the beach, They momentarily lost sight of him and never saw him again. 
Authorities believe he may have gone into the water, but his father, Andreas, believes he was abducted. With the development in the McCain case, he was recently contacted by authorities after more than 20 years to say they're also looking into his son's disappearance to see if it's connected with Madeline's case. Bruckner is also tied to another story of a missing girl in Germany, five-year-old Igna Gehrig. She disappeared from a forest in May of 2015. The investigators who named Bruckner as a suspect in the McCain case have scoured information about the suspect and they say they have promising information. They also added that they had intel leading them to believe that Madeline is in fact dead, although they say it's not enough to charge Bruckner just yet. Apparently the suspect has been known to Portuguese police since 2007, but there were accusations he wasn't investigated properly. The British police were also said to be aware of him at one point as well. The McCain family hasn't spoken about the developments yet, but released a statement saying they are still committed to finding Madeline. They hold out hope of seeing her alive, but are determined to know what happened to her and find some peace. Number three, fireworks setting off in major cities. For the past few weeks, people in large cities around the United States have been hearing mysteriously nightly fireworks exploding around their neighborhoods. For example, there is an increase of over 2,000% of firework complaints in Boston. That number was almost double for New York City. Then there's also reports and subreddits of people asking why fireworks were being set off at night in cities like Hartford, Connecticut, San Francisco, and Columbus, Ohio, among others. Naturally, internet users are quick to point to a conspiracy behind all the nightly barrage. Some say that after being quarantined for so long, people are simply bored. Now that states and businesses are slowly reopening, they're using this time to set off fireworks to feel as if it's a celebration. Plus, the 4th of July was also upcoming. While all of this seems to make sense, there are also far stranger theories floating around regarding this. One of the more popular ones is that the police are actually setting off the fireworks themselves. With protests happening left and right, police departments all around the U.S. are under scrutiny for police brutality and their use of excessive force, especially against African Americans. A few witnesses have claimed police officers themselves are giving away fireworks to teens and young people. One person from New York claimed seeing an undercover officer hand out these fireworks to young men in their neighborhood. But what's the reason behind why police are doing it according to the conspiracy theorists? Well, that it's a part of a planned attack against black communities by the government. This theory was proposed by Robert Jones Jr., a novelist who shared his thoughts on Twitter. He thinks the loud fireworks going off were designed to cause sleep deprivation in turn causing tensions and disruptions, especially in areas with widespread protests happening. Then he also suggested the loud noises could be meant to desensitize people, getting them used to the sound of a war zone, as he put it, because a war zone is what it's about to become. Although Jones has since deleted his tweets, they've been shared countless times. There are, of course, people who don't believe this is possible, but point to the fact that since the 4th of July celebrations were canceled, professional grade as well as consumer grade fireworks have flooded the market. Some sellers are hosting large sales in an effort to get rid of stocks fast. Many are pointing to this as a possibility of how people are suddenly finding themselves with plenty of access to fireworks and setting them off in their area. But whether the fireworks being used are professional or consumer grade is still being debated. There are also people all over the internet claiming they stumbled across fireworks or that someone handed them out. This is difficult to prove though, or disprove, but this is also added to the conspiracy theories claims around the subject. Number two, Crystal Kaiser. It was June 2018 when 17 year old Crystal Kaiser was charged with arson, automobile theft and first degree homicide. She was facing life in prison for the murder of 33-year-old Randall Voller, a Kenosha, Wisconsin resident. On June 5th of 2018, Voller's house was found burning by his neighbors. 
Firefighters arrived on the scene and broke into the home, but were shocked to find Voller's dead body. He had two gunshot wounds to his head. Police traced his missing car, and it led to Kaiser's brother. It wasn't long before police connected Crystal to the case. Apparently, she had posted a selfie image inside Voller's house several hours before the crime, captioning it as her mugshot. She also posted a video of herself flashing a handgun. When police questioned her about Voller's death, she admitted she did it and added she was tired of Voller touching her. Initially, people were against Kaiser for killing the man, but as the case went on and more information was uncovered, public sentiment changed. Apparently, months before he died, a complaint was filed by another teen citing Voller had paid for sex and filmed the entire interaction. Police searched through his home and found incriminating evidence against him, and this led to his arrest weeks after. He was charged with second-degree sexual assault and child enticement. Oddly, Voller didn't even serve jail time and got to go home right away. In the months leading up to his death, Voller was being investigated for possible human trafficking as well as child pornography as a search of his confiscated computers revealed videos of his sexual interactions with minors, including Crystal Kaiser. Kaiser's case later gained traction when celebrities like Kim Kardashian and Ashley Judd campaigned for her release during the Me Too movement. Her case echoes similarities with that of Santonia Brown, who was also a childhood sex trafficking victim who shot and killed the person who trafficked her. Brown was pardoned by Tennessee Governor Bill Haslam after she served 15 years in jail. Kaiser's bail was initially set at $1 million and since her arrest had already stayed in jail for two years. Recently though, her bail was reduced to $400,000, which was paid for by various organizations aimed at helping inmates like the Chicago Community Bond Fund and the Milwaukee Freedom Fund, among others. The case is currently still ongoing. Number 1. Remains of Missing Children It started off with a welfare check. Concerned relatives of 7-year-old J.J. Vallow wanted to know where he was since they hadn't seen him in a while. They also asked about his sister, 17-year-old Tylee Ryan. The last time the two children were seen was around September of 2019. When police got involved, they realized the two children hadn't been seen for months and their mother, Lori, and her current husband, Chad, were nowhere to be seen. It would take months before the two were found in Hawaii. They had gotten married, but the children weren't there. Soon, police uncovered a string of unusual circumstances surrounding the couple's marriage. Apparently, Chad's ex-wife, Tammy, died under suspicious circumstances. Weeks after that, he married Lori. Meanwhile, Vallow's ex-husband died in June of 2019 after an altercation with her brother, Alex Cox. Then Cox himself ended up dying in December of 2019 from a blood clot. There were also allegations of a cult-like church Lori and Chad were involved in, and of Lori believing her children were zombies. At the heart of the investigation was the search for the two missing children, Vallo was ordered by court to produce the children, but when she failed to do so, she was arrested. But in June of 2020, police announced a horrific discovery. They recovered the remains of what they believed were the two missing children on Chad Daybell's property. Using cell phone data taken from Vallo's deceased brother, Alex, police noted he was at Daybell's property several times in the month of September 2019. Police believe Cox might have been involved with the disappearance of the children. His cell phone pinged a signal in two areas of Daybell's property, and that's where police focused their search. One area was near the pond where they found JJ's body. The body was wrapped in black and white plastic. Meanwhile, the other location was in the pet cemetery near a fire pit. They found Ty Lee's remains, which had been burned before it was buried. Chad was immediately arrested after police recovered JJ's remains. It's believed the siblings were killed on two separate days. Ty Lee was killed first on September 8th or 9th and then buried. Then on September 22nd or 23rd, JJ was killed and buried as well. 
Daybell also sent an unusual message to his wife at the time, Tammy, on the morning of September 9th, saying he found a raccoon on the property and shot it. He then buried it in their pet cemetery. Police believe this was his way of saying he had killed and buried Ty Lee since raccoons are nocturnal and rarely come out in the morning. Both Daybell and Vallow are in custody with a $1 million bond. So there were the strange and scary mysteries of the month for July 2020. Every day we encounter strange and baffling stories that most of us don't know what to make of. These are just a handful, but there's still so much more to uncover. Please remember to subscribe to our channel if you liked watching this video. We have new ones coming out every Wednesday and Saturday for you guys to check out. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you soon.